find workforce, I decided to start an advocacy program. And I started training young people to be not just farmers, but to be solution providers across the agricultural value chain. Now, where I have plugged in down there is skilled workforce. That is just one component of the agricultural value chain to tell you the gaps that are missing. So for my, to save my life, I cannot be, a, be an accountant. It's not my strength, it's not my forte, but there's some of you in this room who are skilled accountants. Now, what you all need to begin to think about is how can we fix our food source? Because to, for a large, to a large extent, we're largely dependent on imports, and that's not something that a country of 200 million people should be living on. Do you agree with me? Now, it's time for us to begin to think out of the box and begin to think about how we will fix Nigeria and ensure that we become food sustainable, all right? Food sufficient. Now, think about all the food commodities that we have. I'll go back to that in a bit. But I like to use this to summarize the opportunities because some people will say availability to good seeds in the ag sector is a problem, right? But for me, it's a business opportunity because we have people who can go into research and development. We have people who are biochemists. We have people who are, you know, who will become seed technicians. And that's one industry waiting to happen. To a large extent, most of the seeds that we grow and use to produce our food in country is imported, largely. How do we want to sustain that? We grow other economies because we're dependent on their production. And I'm saying from rice seeds to millet to sorghum, we have institutes like IITA and some of our local research institutes who are producing, but it's still not enough. So there's a business opportunity there for us to begin to work on. Irrigation, yes, it's an issue because largely our food production in Nigeria is rain-fed. And that's seasonal. But it's time for us to begin to think, how can we work on solutions that will ensure that we have all year round cultivation of most of the crops that we need? The world's population is expected to rise to about 200, um, sorry, to about 9 billion by 2050. Who is going to feed 9 billion people? And the greatest land resource lies in the belly of Africa. So Africa, the world is waiting for us to feed them. Now, and I have a beautiful analogy in my mind. Look at the Afri map of Africa. Let's picture it. If you take the map of Africa, the way it is, and try to hold the bulky part and lift it up, what does it bring to mind? Excellent. You're the smartest audience I have ever addressed. Now, guess what? This is the coolest part for me. When you want to fire a gun, what do you do? Where is Nigeria situated? What does that say to you? So Nigeria, we are the trigger that the continent is waiting for. So it's time for us as Nigerians to wake up. I said, I want to distort your sleep. So beyond the 200 million people that need to be fed and earn your own share of the 60 bi 600 billion food, basic food consumption revenue monthly, it's time for us to begin to think about how do we ship food beyond Nigeria? How do we ship resources beyond Nigeria? How do we ensure that this continent is fed and that the world is fed as well? That's what I have come to do today. It's, I can talk about my challenges, but I want to trigger something in you, that we need to wake up. Let the sleeping giant called Nigeria wake up and rise to the occasion and truly become the giant on the continent. Let's not just be, not be a statistic in terms of population, um, a, gi a giant by population. Let's be a giant by the impact we create. Nigeria sits on over 80, 80 million um, hectares of arable land. What are we doing with it? Nigeria is the only country on this continent 
that I know that every state has comparative advantage of so many crops. What are we doing? So when pretty Miss Farmer says that I can't sleep more than three, four hours, those are the kind of things that keep me awake. And I hope I can distort your sleep a bit. Because when I see young people sit on social media and ask me why I don't have that many posts, I simply say I don't make a dime on that street. So I'm not going to live there. Right? It's exciting. Technology is important because we will leverage it. But it should, you see, we need to begin to think how much money, for every time you log on to the internet, how much money do you make? How much value have you added to humanity? How much value have we added to humanity? The agricultural sector, let's go back to that slide because I need, I need that slide to help guide our thoughts. Access to disease pests and weed control techniques. Somebody needs to be solving the problem. Last year and early this year, we had the Tuta Absoluta challenge. That's the one they call the Ebola virus for tomatoes, right? Now, an average basket of tomato between Kaduna, um, Akano, and Abuja, farm gate, would usually be between 400 to 800 naira, right? Farm gate. But by the time it lands in Lagos, sometimes, we're paying between 4,000 and 25,000 in some months. Women, do you agree? Yes. Good. Now, it's time for us to begin to think about bridging that gap. How do we move from 400 Naira to 25,000 Naira in Lagos? What happened? A lot of things happen. Now, for those to, that, that basket, that singular basket to move down south, logistics. So I'm back to logistics infrastructure. Okay? Yes, access to finance is always going to be a need in the industry or in the sector. All right? But we need to begin to think of storage facilities. All right? That's a business opportunity. Who moves the tomatoes? Who moves the produce, the beans, the maize? Who moves them down? Somebody is providing that logistic service. It's a business opportunity. And young people, how many of you can drive in this room? If you can drive, please stand up. Can drive a car? Please stand up. Please, 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 you mommy. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm coming. Thank you. Please sit down. <laughs> I'm coming somewhere now. Access to mechanization and technology. Do you know that for a country with eight, 80 million square hectares of arable land, our tractor population is not up to 30,000. Now, young people, you can drive, eh? I drive too. Please show us that picture of me on my tractor. Mm, don't forget, don't mind all this one. This one is for platform. <laughs> the real deal is that girl right there. Okay? Now, for every tractor that is imported into this country, it would require an operator. For every tractor that is going to be utilized on a farm, it would require a mechanic. Now, we talk about over 22 million of our young people, youth being unemployed. Now, how about some of us doing a skills conversion program through, through the Abira Agribusiness Support and initiatives like the school, farm to school, right? And begin to get training on how to drive a tractor because my average tractor operator earns 50,000 naira a month, minimum, just for being on the payroll. But when they have to go to places like Kaduna and work out of station, they earn some additional allowance during peak season. Now, guess what? We, I, personally, between myself and my company, I own six of this, right? Now, every state in this country would require a minimum of 1,000 to 5,000 tractors to work the land. So when people tell me I'm unemployed, look, me, I am done. I want to help people, right? But I can't work hard for people to just come and be begging me for my money. 
So it's time for us to become tractor mechanics and tractor operators 